All right, so this is 3.2 evaluating the logs using LNs and then graphing. And that second, uh, that actually should be, the second two should obviously be a three, okay? That is identifying your domain, asymptote x-intercept, and then graphing that log. So let's start with one. It says evaluate log base six to the 36. So remember the mental math is gonna help you here. You're trying to find what power six would get raised to to get to 36, which would be what? Two. Two, okay? If you don't see it mentally, set it equal to x, convert it into exponential, and then you can even go a step further and change the base, okay? But hopefully the quicker and more comfortable you get at those, the easier you're gonna be. Two says rewrite the expression, so now we're dealing with ln. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. My brain would pull this to the top. How many of you did that first? Okay, so it would be two times ln of e to the negative fifth, because if it's in the bottom goes to the top or top goes to the bottom, the negative happens. And then we said ln of e would cancel, leaving you with the exponent on the e, which is five, negative five, and then two times negative five would be negative 10. Good on that one? Yes. Yep, okay, and then graphing. So we're graphing using the logs. Oh, and this is missing the equals f of x. So y would equal log base five of x plus four. Convert that into exponential, so it's five to the y equals x plus four. And then five to the y minus four would equal x. And then plug in your values for y. So negative one, zero, and one. So five to the negative one minus four is one fifth minus four or negative three and four fifths. Five to the zero minus four would be one minus four, which is negative three. And then five to the first minus four is five minus four, which is a positive one. Still with me? Yeah, okay, then graph them, um, Christian. Do we have to do the negative ones? Like, could we have done two? Uh, yeah, as long as you, one, can give me at least enough points to make the curve, and two, identify the x-intercept, that's fine. All right, so negative three and four-fifths and negative one is about here. Negative three, zero, and one, one. My graph looks something like that. Didn't go exactly through there. And... From my parentheses, I can adjust my domain and my asymptote. So if I said x plus 4 equals 0, then my asymptote occurs at negative 4. This would be my vertical asymptote. And then that's also going to impact my domain. So my domain would go from negative 4 to positive infinity, which is consistent with my graph. And then the x-intercept I can either get from my t-chart where y was zero, or I can go to my graph. This time it's a whole number, so it falls right on that point. And I would get that the x-intercept is negative three, zero. And then range here would be all row numbers. That's the only other question that you'll get asked. Questions overall? Changes the sign on it. Yep. With the ln graphs, is the domain does is it like is the domain and range like follows the log? Follow, yep, because okay. an ln is a log, right? It's just log basey. Yep. So the ln graph has all the same characteristics as the log graph. Okay, we're good. So that's the content that's on the quiz. I'm going to move on to three three. We're going to swap. Like I said, we'll swap today and tomorrow. So what's next is not going to be on your quiz, but it will be on your test. I hate to move on before I quiz, but it is what it is today, okay? Um, the good thing is it's continuing with logs. It doesn't, it's not contradicting anything we've talked about, so if anything, it's extra practice. It just takes it a step further. So we're gonna talk about the property of logs. <clears throat> the first thing is the change of base formula. So we talked about that most of your calculators don't have the ability to change the base on your logs, so that if I asked you to find log base 20 or log base 3 of 23 you couldn't find it using your calculator because you can't change the base from the 10 the standard 10 to the 3 some of them do have the ability but not all of them if they don't then this is the way around it so you would rewrite that log 
as a ratio of logs and get the same answer as long as your base on the log is the same. So if I did log base 10 and log base 10 of those numbers and divided it, I would get 2.85. Ln, which is log base E, if I did Ln and Ln, I would also get 2.85. If, if your calculator changed the base and you ended up writing like log base 5 of 23 over log base 5 of 23, or sorry, F3, you would also get 2.85. So you're just, the, the, this whole formula is telling you that if you rewrote it as a ratio of any of the same log base, you would still get the same answer. So what you need to know is two things here. One, the bigger number, and I don't mean by value, I mean by size. That is literally larger than the little three. The bigger one goes on top. And then the second thing you need to know is sometimes it's going to ask for a ratio of common logs, and that would be your log base 10. And sometimes it's going to ask for a ratio of natural logs, and that would be your LN. So if you type that in your calculator, log base 23 over 3, over log base 3, sorry, you'll get 2.85, and then LN of 23 over LN of 3, you'd get 2.85. So if I had reversed that, if I had said log base 23 of 3, what goes in my numerator? Three. The 3 goes in the numerator. So this would be log of 3 over log of 23, or ln of 3 over ln of 23. They should both give you the same answer. So everybody practice it because some of your calculators open up the parentheses after the log and some of them don't. You've got to get to know your calculator. So the good news is by test time, you'll be able to do this, God bless you, uh, with a graphing calculator. So if I did log of three, I have to close my parentheses and then hit log of 23, and I get 0 0.3503, which would be 0, 0, 0.037, which would be 0, 0.4. And if I did ln of three divided by ln of 23, I get the same thing. So if your calculator does allow you to change the base, you can get directly here, but the question on the test is gonna ask you to rewrite it as a ratio to make sure you know how to do both. Rewrite it as a ratio and then find it. So it matters which one you put on top and bottom? It matters which one you, yeah. The, literally like the one that is bigger in size, not in value, is the one that goes in the top. So the one that's in this location goes in the top and the one that's in this location goes in the bottom. All right, so it says rewrite the logs as a ratio of A, common logs, and B, natural logs, and then use the calculator to evaluate the log and round it to three decimal places. All right, so which one would A as a common log, what would go in the top? Good, log five over log eight. B as natural logs. LN of 5 over LN of 8. And then if you actually work either of those out, you should get, oh, I erased it, 0 0.7739, which is 0 0.774. Questions so far? Yep. All right, so properties of logarithms. Logarithms. So this, there are three properties that you are going to use to expand and to condense. So, so far we're expanding. The product property says that if I'm finding the log of two terms, whether it be two variables or a number and a variable or two numbers, I can actually expand that statement out by rewriting the log with the same base twice and adding what you would have been multiplying together with one log. So when I rewrite the logs and expand, it's addition. The quotient property, so if it starts as division and I expand, it becomes subtraction. And the power property, 
if it starts with an exponent, that exponent can get multiplied on the front of the log. So if you think about why this happens, like if I had x to the third times x to the second, what do I typically do with those exponents? You add them. So each individual log can become its own exponential expression, right? And so if I'm multiplying two of those, then I would add the exponents. So that's why multiplication becomes addition. If I was dividing like x to the third over x to the second, what do I typically do with those exponents? Subtract. So the division becomes subtraction. And then if I'm raising a power like x to the third raised to the second, what do I do with those? Multiply. So the exponent becomes the multiplication on the front. I'm actually going to have you go to 3. So go to 3 and then we'll go back to 2. So this says use the product rule to expand each log expression. It should actually be product and quotient. So if I look at A, that's being multiplied together, which means when I expand it, what happens? It becomes addition. So this would be log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 5. And then just like everything else we do in here, if it can be simplified, it needs to be. Can either part of that be simplified? Yeah. What? Log 3 to 9. Good. Would become? Uh, three. 2. Good. So 3 to the second power gives me 9 which means log base 3 of 9 is 2. So log of 1,000 times x becomes log of 1,000 plus log of x. What's the base on the word log? 10. Can I raise 10 to a power to get to 1,000? Yeah, which would be? Three. The tens are easy, right? Because it's the number of zeros that are there. So that becomes three plus log of x. You can leave it as log of x or you can write it as log base 10 of x. I don't care which way you write it. Either way, it's still correct. C now is your quotient, right? So this becomes log base 5 of 25 minus log base 5 of x. Can either of those be simplified? Yes. Which one? Good. Is 2. So I get 2 minus log base 5 of x. And the last one has both the product, I'm sorry, both the exponent and the quotient. So if the first way you split it could be ln of e to the third minus ln of 8. And then I would say that there's actually a couple of ways to go from here. So hopefully one of the ways makes sense. The first thing I can do is actually use the quotient, I mean the exponent rule, which means this comes to the front. This would be 3 ln of e minus ln of 8. And then hopefully you remember that ln of e would cancel out giving you the exponent on that e, which is just 1. So I'd get 3 times 1 minus ln of 8 or 3 minus ln of 8. That's one way to do it. Some of you might have spotted from here that you can reduce that first one. So ln of e to the third, the ln would cancel, the ln and the e would cancel, giving you your exponent, which would have been 3 minus ln of 8. Either way, same answer. And then some of you may have even written them out as like log base e of e to the third, taking the third. That's fine too. Okay. So whichever way your brain takes you, as long as it gets the right answer, which is that 3 minus ln of 8. Questions on any of those? Okay, back the next one. So this one says approximate the log using the properties of logs, given that log base b of 2 is approximately 3.3562, and log base b of 3 is 0.5646. So we don't know what b is, but it does want us to simplify these, which means I have to rewrite what's there using the terms that are given. So if I have a 2 and a 3, how could I rewrite 6 in terms of 2 and 3? 2 times 3, right? So this could be written as log base 6 of 2 times 3. Nope, not log base 6. Log base b 
God bless you. Of two times three. Now the product rule tells me what happens when I expand those. Yeah. Add them. So it becomes log base B of two plus log base B of three. And then up here, I can substitute in the values for each of those. So this would be 0 0.3562 plus 0 0.5646. Yeah, that's 8. 9. Yep, right? 0 0.9208. Okay, so then B, I need to do the same thing. I have to expand it so that it's a, in terms of log base B of 2 and log base B of 3, Okay, this time there's a power that's raised to both on the 3 and the B, which means two things. I can either distribute that first, so there's two ways to look at this. This could either be log base B of 3 to the negative 3 times B to the negative 3, and then you can split them and shift the power forward, making that negative 3 log base B of 3 plus negative 3 log base B of B. So that's one way to do it. The other way is to shift this negative 3 to the front. So it would be negative 3 log base B of 3B. And then when I expand it, I have to remember that that negative 3 is going to both the B and the 3, which means negative 3 log base B of 3 minus 3 log base B of B. So just make sure you realize that that's different than if it just said like 3B to the negative third without the parentheses. If that's the case, then that negative 3 is only going with the B term. Yep. Why are you because it, sh it should be addition, but there's a negative 3 at the front. So I just distributed it, that in in the same step. All right, so now what can I replace? They gave me what this value is, right? So this would be negative 3 times 0 0.5646 minus 3. Can I simplify log base B of B? Yes. It is? Good. So this becomes... Negative 1.6938 minus 3 or negative 4.6938. Oh, so let's... Okay, go ahead and try these. Use the power rule or the quotient rule or the product rule to expand these out and simplify them as much as you can. All right, so the first one, you want to bump the 2 to the front. It would be 2 times log base 5 of 7. And then the second one is there in the blue. So the 4 goes to the, both the front of the 8 and the x, which means it would be 4 log base 2 of 8 plus 4 log base 2 of x. Log base 2 of 8 is actually 3 because 2 to the third power would be 8. And then 4 times 3 is 12. So you get 12 plus 4 log base 2 of x. Careful not to lose your bases on these x's, I mean on the logs when you expand them, okay? That's one of the common mistakes. And then the third one's there in the purple. So if it's a square root, it's the same thing as raising it to the power of one half. And then the one half gets bumped to the front. So it'd be one half log base 10, technically, of x. And then the last one, 
five would be on the front of both terms, so it'd be five log base, or log, ln of six, and then five ln of e, and ln of e cancels, giving you the exponent on the e, which is one. So five times one is five, and I get five ln of six plus five. Questions on that one? Can you scroll back? Mm-hmm. All right, last set of examples, and then we'll do the condensing. So this just, some of them are just a little bit more complicated. Okay, and again, there's multiple ways to do each one. So this is what they will say. Use the log properties to expand each expression as much as possible. Or they'll put it all together and say expand or condense, and you've got to figure out from there what to do. Okay, but you have to look at it and say, okay, this one has a power, which means the 2 gets bumped to the front. This would be 2 log base b of x. And then you could say that's the square root of z, which means z to the 1 half. And then when I expand it, it becomes 2 log base b of x plus 2 log base b of z to the 1 half. That 1 half gets bumped to the front again with the 2. And I'd get 2 log base b of x plus log base b of z because the 1 half times the 1 from, sorry, times the two is going to cancel out. That's one way to do it. You could have also changed this from the beginning to one half, distributed the two in, and then expanded it. Either way, you should end up with the same answer. And neither of those can be simplified. They're all variables. With B, again, same thing. I can distribute this to both the top and the bottom and then expand it, or I can expand it and then, or sorry, do the power and then expand it. So I could do three log base five of 25 minus three log base five of y. And then the log base five of 25 becomes what? Two, two so this would be three times two minus three log base five of y, or six minus three log base of y. C is ln, so this would be ln of 10 minus ln of e. So picture this on the part that you wouldn't have a calculator on. I wouldn't know ln of 10, that would stay that way. But ln of e becomes what? One. Good. And the last one would be log of 9 plus log of the square root of 10. Square root's the same thing as raising to the 1 half. And the 1 half would get bumped to the front. And then log base 10 of 10 becomes what? 1. So 1 half times 1 is one half. Okay, now we're going the other way. So we expanded first, now we're condensing. So you'll know the difference because of how many logs appear in your statement. If there's one a log, obviously you can break it apart into multiple logs, that would be expanding. If you've got multiple logs, you want to get it down so that it's one log, that would be the condensing. And they're the reverse. So the product property says if they're adding at the beginning and I condense it, it should be multiplication. The quotient property says if I'm subtracting in the beginning, it should be division. And the power product says if there's a number on the front, it should shift to the back to become my exponent. All right, so again, the directions will say write as a single log or condense. When they eventually get blended all together, it's just going to say either expand or condense. So you've got to figure out again by looking at it which one it is. If you have the word log written more than one time, you're probably condensing. Okay. So this is condensed, which means if it starts out as addition like this first one, then I want to do what with it? Multiply. Multiply. So log base 2, and again, don't lose the base on that log. It changes the value. Of 4 times the square root of 8. So we're just rewriting it for right now, and then we'll talk about simplifying it, because technically that could be simplified, right? The left side would have been 2 plus, and then I would have changed that to 2 root 2. Right now we're just condensing. 
b log of 6x minus log of 6. This would be log of 6x over 6. Again, that would eventually be simplified, but just rewrite it for now. It'll probably say simplify, okay. yeah. C, this becomes the exponent here, so this would be log base three of nine squared over 27. And again, by the time you get to test, that would be 81 over seven, I mean over 27, which would get reduced. And the bottom one, ln of x minus two plus five ln of x, so the five goes to the back, first for the exponent and its addition, which means ln of x minus 2 times x to the fifth. And you can write it as ln of x minus 2 times x to the fifth or ln of x to the fifth times x minus 2. Order's not going to matter because it's a product. Christian. For this one, no, but pretty much, I mean, by the time you get to your test, you're going to be simplifying. Okay, last one. You do it, and then we're done. This time it says, use the property of logs to expand each expression, and where possible, evaluate without a calculator. So again, pretend that you don't have your calculator, because on the test, this would be separated off. When you expand that, it becomes subtraction, and then log base 9 of 81 would be 2. Log base 9 of x is going to stay that way.